we gather together on this eve of Christmas to prepare our hearts for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, to meditate upon the mystery of that incarnation by which we are redeemed, and to receive with joy the message of our salvation. Our prayer is that your heart will be open so that you will experience the deep peace and vibrant hope that Jesus came to bring. We welcome all who are gathered for worship those who are members of this congregation and those who are visiting with us this day. As this will be a sung liturgy, congregants are asked to wear masks throughout the service of worship. Masks not only offer some safeguards to the wearer, but are also a means of protecting others. It's a request that's consistent with current CDC and South Carolina DHEC recommendations. A, a couple of announcements. At, at your convenience, uh, I would ask you to take a look at all of the names that are listed on pages 18 and 19. Usually those are associated with the, with the poinsettias that are given. I, as we found this week, life can be somewhat uncertain, and so I would invite you to think about all of those who, whose lives have made an impact on us, who, uh, who have helped, helped shape and form who we are as people of God. With sympathy for the family and in the promise of life eternal, we announced the death of Mr. Randy Wallace this week. We ask your prayers for the family. I invite you to join me as we light the Christ candle. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We have beheld Christ's glory. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. In the word of life, and the light of the light of all people.
only God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the maker of heaven and earth. The word made flesh, the Lord, and giver of life. Amen. Amen. As we enter into the light of Christ, we confess our need for God's mercy and hear God's word of forgiveness. God of peace, we confess that we are not at peace with others or with ourselves. We bring to you all that tears us apart. In your mercy, mend us. Reconnect us to one another and to you. Let the peace reign over all the earth. Through the Prince of Peace, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the word who has come to dwell with us, God has given us grace upon grace. Forgiveness that is stronger than our sin. Love that can heal every broken heart. Hear this word of God's pardon and peace. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, you are free from all your sins. Rise, shine, for your light has come. Amen. Falling rain, 
and vocalizing in not so quiet sort of way the sounds of a swirling storm. Their counselor is adding their best impressions of an agitated flock of sheep while in the background. A chorus of pastors whose sole contribution to the world of music is loud. Added their not so heavenly refrains of glory to God in the highest. Imagine the cacophony of commotion as the Christmas text was read. And at the end of the reading, a somewhat simple question. Did you hear? Well, let me just say that I'd like to hold to the all is calm, all is bright, silent, holy night image that our hymns portray. I like the idea of a quiet, solemn majesty of Christmas. The cast of Christmas as perfectly poised and ready to praise as, well, as the figures that grace the lawn in front of our parish hall. That's, that's the Christmas vision that I hold. But I find that solemnity is rarely duplicated in real life. In a previous parish, the youth of the congregation always presented a live nativity scene each year before Christmas, and they would they would stand as a living scene for a couple of hours for each of the nights before Christmas Eve. It was quite a gift that they offered to that community in Northeast Charlotte, and, and most of the time, most of the time, the young people. Well, they took their task to heart. They assumed their role with the Christmas drama, within the Christmas drama, with, with a quiet decorum. But to the dismay and consternation of some of our more senior members in the congregation, there was the one night when the boy portraying the angel Gabriel made his grand entrance by performing a series of spectacularly executed backflips on his way to his perch atop the crutch. And I'm not so sure that the noise and stress are that much more controlled when my family gathers for Christmas. We begin, of course, with a plan. There's a designated gift giver. There's the gift wrap collector charged with getting the discarded wrappings into the trash bags. And every year we plan on gifts being opened one at a time so all can ooh and ah as each gift is given. And it all works for a time, but only for the briefest of time until it all breaks down into helter-skelter with bows and ribbon wrapping and boxes being flung from all corners of the room. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift was given. I always fervently sing that on Christmas Eve. And yet my experience of Christmas, more often than not, fails to sink up. And sometimes I ponder that Christmas question, did you hear? Of course, this year, now quickly coming to a close, hasn't quite matched up to our normal expectations either. A virus that was unnamed a year ago has our altered our definition of normal, has changed our practices and introduced a whole new vocabulary into our existence. PPEs, virtual classrooms, Zoom, and Corona now mostly refers to the virus and not to the adult libation. There have been devastating wildfires out west and so many named tropical storms this year that the National Weather Service exhausted their hurricane, hurricane name list predetermined for 2020. So many storms raged through the Gulf Coast, it prompted one exasperator, exasperated resident to write, Dear Sir, please cancel my subscription to the Hurricane of the Month Club. The year saw unrest and disorder in communities and in politics. 
and even familial relations were pulled and tested and strained with social distancing, or perhaps it was with too much socializing as stressed out parents contended with jobs at home while having the added task of being at home teachers and principals and relational therapists. In reflection, after a year of trying to adjust to a most unnormal new normal, I suppose that the question that I've been asked most often during the year is when. When do you think all of this will end? And of course, what lies beneath that question is our deepest yearning to know that it will all be all right again. That we might once again be able to find in the midst of a world that seems so uncertain and disarrayed, a glimmer of hope, a sense of peace amongst the chaos. Amen. Though I make no claims as a future teller, I do believe in the one who holds the future. So will you please join me as together we share once again the story of Christmas with the reading of our Christmas Gospel beginning on page 5 in your worship. Our Christmas story comes from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. To us is born a savior. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He was to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. To us, a Savior is born. Jesus Christ, our Lord. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. To us is born a Savior. Jesus Christ, our Lord. There were shepherders camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. <coughs> Suddenly God's angels stood among them and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. To us is born a Savior. Jesus Christ, our Lord. The angel said, Don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A Savior has just been born in David's town. A Savior who is Messiah and Master. This is what you're to look for. A baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. To us is born a Savior. Jesus Christ, our Lord. At once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. To us is born a Savior. Jesus Christ, our Lord. When the angels had left them, the shepherders talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. To us is born a Savior. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the shepherders were in Christ. Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear and deep within herself. To us is born the Savior. Jesus Christ, our Lord. The shepherders returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen. It turned out exactly the way they'd been told. To us is born the Savior. 
Jesus Christ, our Lord. People of God. People of God. Did you hear? How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of this heaven. Did you hear? To us is born a Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. May the blessings of Christmas, peace, joy, hope, and love be yours today and always. Amen.
bring comfort to all who suffer in the sadness of our world. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, the angels sign peace to God's people on earth. Strengthen those who work for peace and justice in all the world. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, shepherds in the field heard good tidings of joy. Give us grace and courage to proclaim in word and deed the gospel of Christ's redemption. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, strangers found the holy family and saw the baby lying in the manger. Bless our homes and all whom we love. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, heaven has come down to earth, and earth is raised to heaven. Hold in your hand all those who have passed through death to the hope of your coming kingdom. Holy God, in this holy night, Christians the world over celebrate Christ's birth. Open our hearts that he may be born in us this day. Holy God, Pondering the mystery of your love, we offer these our prayers in the name of Christ, the Word made flesh. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lift up your hearts. We let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places. Offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God we cannot see. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending in. Heaven and earth be filled Hail, Hosanna, Lord of life. Blessed be the coming Savior. Hail, Hosanna, Lord of Holy God, creator of all and source of life. At the birth of time, your word brought light into the world. In the fullness of time, you sent your word, born of Mary, to shine in our darkness and to make us your daughters and sons. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus gave thanks, took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his birth and life among us, his death and resurrection, we await his coming again when all things will be restored in him. By your spirit, bless us in this bread and cup, that held and nourished by you, we may live as your children, shining with the light of your Son. To him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who forgive us against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Lord Jesus, grace is evident at this table. And we have shall we share in that grace. Salvation is celebrated at this table. And, and we, we have, have gathered to celebrate that salvation. salvation. Good news of great joy for all people is proclaimed at this table. May we be messengers of your grace and salvation, for you are the Lord forever. Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him who believed in his name. He gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth, the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to you, Christ.
angels and shepherds and all your creatures. We gather around your Son who is born for us. Bless us with your holy presence and inspire us to help those who have no place to dwell. Be with us that we might share Christ's love with all the world. For he is our light and salvation. Glory in heaven and peace on earth now and forevermore. We thank you, Lord, for Christmas. Grant that we may be grateful enough to keep it not for a day, but for always. In the name of Christ, whose coming is a mystery, whose life is a miracle, whose ministry in word and in deed and death is salvation, and whose presence is now our highest hope. God Almighty, the creator of all, the word made flesh, the giver of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. <laughs> all who look upon this manger. May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise our thoughts to him, who is God with us and Savior of all, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen.